Welcome to this Prentice Hall video on service operations management. An operational issue to consider for all business facilities is how they should be laid out. The layout describes the way in which various parts of the facility are positioned relative to one another. If layout is well planned, production can flow smoothly from one part of the facility to another. This production may be materials or employees, but with services it is often customers themselves. Good layout supports the goals of the organization, which may include convenience and efficiency. If layout is poorly planned, problems can occur. Time can be wasted and work areas become congested. It is easy for customers and employees to take good facility layout for granted. Unfortunately, it is also easy for customers to think poorly of a service provider simply because of a poor layout. So what defines good layout? In this segment, we'll consider some basic issues in service facility layout. Facility layout is a key decision in most organizations. Layout specifies how the facility will be organized. One type of layout is called a product layout, which is like an assembly line. The various workstations are organized in a sequence that corresponds with the steps to produce the given product. Objectives of a product layout are efficiency and throughput, with minimal delays at any single station in the assembly process. Product layouts have little application in service businesses, however. The production steps and processing times tend to be customer specific, and in almost all cases cannot be exactly controlled by the organization. For example, at a ski resort, skiers may choose which lift lines they enter, when and where they eat lunch, and so on. Each customer may take more or less time in each station at the facility. Even with a cafeteria line, the amount of time customers spend at each station and the desirable sequence of stations is likely to vary from one customer to the next. There are several types of layout available to service organizations. Many of these are variations of what is referred to as process layouts. In a process layout, design centers on the variety of processes that take place at the facility. Each unit of production may go through different steps in a different order each time. To make a process layout effective, we want good relative station proximity. Depending on facility objectives, the layout may be planned differently. For example, in a retail setting, it's desirable to have high margin items, such as cosmetics, near the entrance to the store. In other settings, placing high volume items near the back of the store maximizes customer travel to reach the items needed. In an office setting, there may be a central copy center to minimize travel for all office users. What about layout in a fitness center? Designers must consider the various stations the center will include. For example, there will be dressing rooms, equipment and towel issue, classroom space, and of course, fitness areas such as swimming pools, aerobics rooms, gyms, and equipment rooms. What do you think are important layout factors for positioning various parts of the fitness center, such as the health bar, member check-in control station, instructional classrooms, fitness areas, and the track? Miami University administrators determined that it was important to put areas such as the pro shop, health bar, and restrooms near the entrance. Why? So that spectators for aquatic competitions and other non-members wouldn't be required to pass through membership access control. Gil Siegel, Senior Facilities Administrator, described some of the layout design issues in the members-only area of the center. I think when you went through access control for our patrons, you'd see uh, that the fitness area was on one side of the building, the exercise aerobic rooms were on the other. We do academic instruction in both of those areas, and therefore uh, it would not be congested in the main uh, access control area because they'd be going in opposite directions. You'd go straight up if you were to utilize the track. And I think one of the big considerations is to, we wanted to bring in in our exercise aerobic rooms, fitness areas, and the track as much natural light as you possibly could. The ambiance that natural light brings into a facility is really a, uh, is very telling and dramatic, and we like that approach. Therefore, we see that fitness center planning considered various layout factors, such as open access to some parts of the facility to non-members, minimal congestion around instructional areas, 
and the effective use of natural light for the exercise areas and track. Such considerations help Miami University design a fitness facility that is aesthetically pleasing, has good flows of customer traffic, and is very functional and convenient for customers.